can count on. Way 31 News at 4 starts now. We begin the 4 o'clock hour with a look at our Way 31 Storm Tracker Early Warning Radar Network. Showers and a few storms making their way across North Alabama, as you can see, when you can expect them in your neighborhood. Plus, only on Way 31, a Huntsville man accused of multiple crimes, including rape and kidnapping, working at the BBC. The center taking action after we started asking questions. To think that our caregivers were the victims uh, is just incomprehensible to me. Four people killed at a medical facility in Oklahoma. This, just one of the latest mass shootings in America. Thank you so much for joining us for Way 31 News at 4. I'm Marie Waxel. Dan Schaefer has the evening off. We want to get straight to Way 31 Chief Meteorologist Kate McKenna now. She's in our Storm Tracker Weather Center monitoring the system moving across our area right now. Kate? Well, all this rain is coming along with a cold front, and although the temperatures have dropped, it's not so much because the front has passed in its entirety, it's because we are getting some rain cooled air. So look at the Way 31 Storm Tracker Early Warning Radar Network. You will see one severe thunderstorm warning out in northwest Georgia, but as far as we are concerned, we've gotten some stronger storms, some very heavy rain, but nothing severe at this time. Take a look here at Scottsboro, and I've got a closer view here of the heavier rain as it's tracking towards the east. So get ready for a lot of lightning, a lot of thunder, and some messy driving along 72 around Scottsboro up into Jackson County. We've also gotten quite a bit of lightning and some locally heavy rain around the shoals. This is our live real-time radar data coming from our Muscle Shoals radar site, especially up towards Florence and then just to the north. This is also continuing to track to the east. So as you can see, the eastward progress here, we might be getting a little bit of a break in spots like Madison and some parts of Huntsville, Decatur and Athens as well, just some light rain. But just know that if you're farther toward the east in Fort Payne, there's another round of rain heading your directions. Temperatures right now, I told you we're getting some of that rain-cooled air. We're at 71 degrees in Huntsville, 72 in Decatur, 78 currently in Moulton, 72 in Gunnersville. So as we go throughout this evening, rain chances will continue to drop down to only isolated chances by 10 o'clock tonight. I am tracking what's in store for your Friday. If there are any leftover showers as you head out the door tomorrow morning and then what you can expect for your weekend, it's coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Kate. And we want to remind you to take a moment and download our Way 31 Storm Tracker weather app. It will alert you of any watches and warnings issued for your neighborhood. Best of all, it is free to download. Breaking news in the Casey White case this afternoon. His new attorneys filed more than half a dozen motions in his capital murder case. It all comes less than two weeks before White is set to go on trial in Lauderdale County for a 2015 murder. Among the motions, White's attorneys want to know if the state will seek the death penalty. They're also asking to be able to review all physical evidence related to the murder of Connie Ridgway. That includes clothing, weapons, fingerprints, and blood samples. White is currently being held in Donaldson Correctional Facility after his escape from the Lauderdale County Jail on April 29th. His attorneys are also asking all statements White made to law enforcement after his capture be suppressed. The judge has yet to rule on any of those motions. New at four, a Huntsville man accused of rape and kidnapping worked crowd control at the Von Brown Center. The VBC only learning about his work on their campus after our I-team started asking questions. Only on Way 31, our investigation into how the man police say posed as a rideshare driver last year to allegedly sexually assault two women slipped through the background checks designed to catch serious charges like these. Way 31's Matt Kroschel is breaking this story for you right now at 4. Justin Norfleet worked in a security type role assigned to crowd control for at least one large event at the VBC last month. We alerted the VBC administration to this after a tipster posted on Reddit they believe they spotted him working at that event. Huntsville police arresting 25-year-old Justin Norfleet after two separate incidents where females reported he posed as a rideshare driver luring them into his car and kidnapping and raping them last year. Norfleet facing four serious felony charges, including kidnapping and rape. He bonded out and was working when he landed the gig at the VBC in crowd control. The cases haven't gone to a grand jury yet. Norfleet has waived a preliminary hearing. Our I-team alerting the VBC staff Thursday to the allegations and the VBC confirming that Norfleet did work there 
through a Huntsville temp agency called Randstad at at least one event this year. Once our newsroom brought the allegations to the VBC administration, they called the contractor who did confirm Norfleet passed the original background check, but only last week did the 2021 felony accusations come to light after the rest of the background check came back. So I called Norfleet today to ask for a comment on our story. Haven't heard back. Corporate office over at that temp agency said they did not want to comment on the story either. Meanwhile, Huntsville police telling me they believe there could be more victims out there and they're still asking for possible victims to contact their special victims unit. I'm Matt Kroschel, Way 31 News. Thank you, Matt. Now we review the bail instructions signed by the judge in this case, and there was no mention of any restrictions placed on Norfleet while he awaits his cases to move through the justice system. New at four, Huntsville police say someone stole an ATM from the outside of a local credit union. When authorities responded to an alarm at Family Security Credit Union on Highway 72 early this morning, they found a large forklift and one of the ATMs there missing. Investigators believe the forklift was taken from a nearby construction site. They believe the suspect is a white man. If you have any information, call police. Meanwhile, it's day three in the search for a Madison bank robbery suspect. Take a look at your screen. This is a look at him now. Authorities say he went into the Regions Bank at the intersection of 72 and Waltriana Highway Tuesday and told people there he had a small package and inside was a bomb. Authorities later said that package was determined not to be a bomb or any other type of explosive. If you recognize the suspect or have any information about this crime, you're asked to call police. A Marshall County Corrections officer faces charges this afternoon. Here he is on your screen. Authorities arrested David Lowe today. He's accused of bringing drugs, including meth and marijuana, along with a cell phone and alcohol, into the jail. New information on the mass shootings across America now. The latest in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Four people died at a medical facility yesterday afternoon. This as other investigations continue in Buffalo, New York and Uvalde, Texas. The Buffalo suspect in court today. In Uvalde, funerals continue for the 21 victims killed at Robb Elementary School. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. America rocked by gun violence yet again with another mass shooting in this country, this time at a medical facility in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We are supposed to be the ones that are caring for others during tragedies. To think that our caregivers were the victims uh, is just incomprehensible to me. Four people killed Wednesday afternoon, including Dr. Preston Phillips and Dr. Stephanie Hooson. Police say 45-year-old Michael Lewis stormed into the facility targeting Dr. Phillips, who performed back surgery on him days before. He came in with the intent to kill Dr. Phillips and anyone who got in his way. He blamed Dr. Phillips for the ongoing pain following the surgery. Authorities say Lewis was armed with a handgun and an AR-15 assault-style rifle. That rifle purchased just hours before the shooting. At 2 p.m. on June the 1st, Mr. Lewis purchased a semi-automatic rifle from a local gun store. Lewis took his own life as first responders rushed into the building, according to police. These new details emerging as another mass shooting investigation continues in Buffalo, New York. Peyton Gendron facing a judge Thursday on 10 counts of first degree and second degree murder. Gendron has pleaded not guilty. He was arraigned on 25 counts. The highest charge is domestic act of terrorism motivated by hate in the first degree. After 10 black people were shot dead in a supermarket and in Uvalde, Texas, three more children being laid to rest Thursday after 19 elementary school students and two teachers were killed at Robb Elementary. And in Uvalde, there are growing questions about law enforcement's response and now investigators are also going through the alleged gunman's phone to try to pinpoint a specific motive. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. President Biden is set to address the country tonight at 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 our time. The White House says he will talk about the need for Congress to pass what he calls common sense laws to combat the epidemic of gun, vi the epidemic of gun violence. We know a background check to carry a firearm can take just 10 minutes. 
Well, we went to one local gun shop to learn about that process. Now, any gun shop in Alabama requires an ATF form to be completed. At Bullet and Barrel, you do, you do it inside at one of their computers. The general manager there says in just minutes it comes back whether someone can or cannot carry a firearm. And if you've ever filled out an ATF form before, you know it's full of personal questions. It asks about your background and then a few short questions on any felony charges, unlawful use of drugs or misdemeanor crimes for domestic abuse. Bullet and Barrel's general manager says people used to think certain long guns didn't require background checks, but that's no longer true. Back in the day, as they say, you didn't necessarily have to have a background check for like a hunting type shotgun or something like that. Um, nowadays, if there is a serial number and it is a firearm transferred to us, it has to have a background check. The GM says the system in getting a gun, though, can be flawed if certain scenarios and situations involving an individual are not properly documented. If certain misconduct or crime isn't reported to the FBI or National Criminal Incident Background Check Service, there can be a shortcoming. Well, the gun shop says their role is simply red light, green light. If it comes back that an individual passed the background check, they're welcome to purchase a firearm and be on their way. In just months, remember, Alabama will no longer require licenses to carry concealed guns. Coming up on Way 31 News at 5, the gun shop explains why that legislation won't impact them, but why they say it could impact law enforcement officials on the job. Well, nearly each day we're dealing with new details about the multiple mass shootings in our country over the last few weeks. Make sure you know the latest information on each of these cases by downloading our Way 31 News app. It will alert you of any breaking news developments you need to know about. It's free for Apple and Android devices. Hundreds of thousands of Americans filing for unemployment. We take a look at the jobless data from across the country and right here in North Alabama. Coverage you can count on. You're watching Way 31 News with Dan Schaefer, Marie Waxel, Chief Meteorologist Kate McKenna, and the Way 31 Storm Tracker Early Warning Radar Network. New details this afternoon, the U.S. Government Accountability Office officially released its report looking into the selection of Huntsville as the home of Space Command. Well, it reviewed the Air Force's process for identifying the preferred location for the headquarters, while the GAO said it found issues with transparency and credibility, it did not recommend changing the Alabama decision. New information now on that verdict in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard defamation trial. The jury concluded both were defamed, meaning they'll both pay up. But the case seen as widespread victory for Johnny Depp, with Amber Heard's team vowing to appeal. ABC's Morgan Norwood explains what's next. The bombshell verdict in the superstar trial involving Amber Heard and ex-husband Johnny Depp appears to be headed for an appeal. How Amber Heard's attorney on the case. Today Show. She has some excellent grounds for it. A jury found that Depp had been defamed with actual malice in three statements and an opinion piece written by Heard in the Washington Post, who said she was a public figure representing domestic abuse. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, yes. The panel awarded him more than $10 million, but jurors say Depp must also pay up, awarding Heard $2 million, Answer, no. finding that she was defamed by Depp's lawyer, who accused her of creating a detailed hoax surrounding the abuse allegations. So maybe the jurors didn't believe she got together with her friends uh, to do this. But when it comes to the fundamental allegations at issue in this case, the jurors believed Johnny Depp and did not believe Amber Heard. In some ways, this trial was a repeat of a lawsuit that Depp filed in the United Kingdom against a British tabloid after they called him, quote, a wife beater. Except the judge in that case ruling in the newspaper's favor, finding Heard's abuse claims were substantially truthful. Johnny Depp brought a suit in the UK for the same case. And we weren't allowed to tell the jury this, but the court found that Mr. Depp had committed at least 12 acts of domestic violence including sexual violence against Amber. Now, Amber Heard's team looking for another chance to prove their case. And Amber Heard releasing a statement saying she's heartbroken. Johnny Depp, on the other hand, saying the jury gave him his life back. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. 
Now at four, we're learning more about the current unemployment situation across the country and here in North Alabama. 200,000 Americans filed jobless claims last week. That's down 11,000 from the week before. According to the state labor department, more than 2,600 were from here in Alabama, including more than 200 from Madison County. On Wall Street, here's a look where stocks finished this afternoon. They actually rose in afternoon trading, but remained a little choppy amid wariness about economic growth and rising interest rates. The Dow Jones added 435 points to land at 33,248. The Nasdaq Composite Index added 322 points, and the S&P 500 added 76 points. Weather coverage you can count on with Alabama's Weather Anchor of the Year, Way 31's Chief Meteorologist, Kate McKenna. What started as a fairly quiet Thursday has transitioned into this, and we knew it would get much more active with this approaching cold front. That's exactly what we've seen. The Way 31 Storm Tracker Early Morning Radar Network giving us a pretty busy picture here. And there is one severe thunderstorm warning showing up on your screen. It's not within North Alabama. It's within Northwest Georgia. That storm is heading away from us. But let's get you a closer view of what's happening around I-65, 565 from Athens down to Decatur, over to Madison and Huntsville. Just some light rain right Right now we're kind of in between the heavy rain that moved through a couple of hours ago and then another round that is off to the north and off to the west. So all of this is slowly but surely trying to kind of lift to the north. The heaviest rain right now is in a couple of locations, one of them being Lincoln County. Notice all of the lightning with this strongest storm, though, just off to the northeast outside of Lincoln County and then back into Lauderdale County north of Florence. Quite a bit of lightning with this particular storm. Again, I reiterate all of this is tracking mainly towards the east, but the strongest activity is kind of along our northern fringes right now. And there's not a lot of eastward progress with that particular cell around Florence, so get ready for some locally heavy rain with that one. This is what it looks like all across the way 31 Thompson roofing and construction sky cam network. There's the break that I was just mentioning to you indicator note raindrops on that camera lens. It's different though everywhere else socked in with rain in spots like Gunnersville and Muscle Shoals Huntsville right now still seeing some very light showers or at 71 degrees. So through tonight those storms are going to be fading. An isolated shower is still possible. 64 degrees is our forecast low and behind the cold front the wind is shifting out of the north at five miles per hour. You'll feel the effects of that by tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'll take you through the rest of this evening into 7 o'clock. Notice that the heaviest rain stays hugging right along that Tennessee Alabama line. And then as we continue closer to midnight, this is what I mean by storms are fading, just a couple of lingering showers. And as we get into early tomorrow morning, although the cold front will have passed, it's not going to be impossible for us to see maybe an isolated shower across northeast Alabama. But aside from that, we are going to be staying dry for our Friday and the clouds try and break up as we go through the afternoon. Finally, this entire cloud deck is going to be shifting off towards the east through tomorrow night. And then by the time we wake up on Saturday, that's a full day of sunshine, a beautiful start to the weekend. There's still the chance for a stronger storm the rest of today, meaning through this evening, but it is still a low end risk. We're talking a one out of five on the scale there. So heading out the door tomorrow morning, there is that mention for that isolated shower, but that's about it. Temperature they are going to be star starting mainly in the 60s, but by the afternoon, check this out. We've got highs in the lower 80s with some clearing taking place. It's not going to be a gorgeous blue sky day all day long, but it is going to be a pretty nice day in comparison to what we have been seeing today. Speaking of rain, there's one spot that's going to get quite a bit of rain, and that's going to be South Florida. We now have potential tropical cyclone one. There's the center of circulation just along the northern coast of the Yucatan. Max sustained wind right now is at 35 miles per hour. The wind shear is displacing all the thunderstorm activity away from the center of circulation. So all of that right there, that big red blob, that's the thunderstorm activity, the convection associated with this. It is going to be tracking off towards the northeast here. So to take you on a closer timeline, we do expect this to strengthen to at least Tropical Storm Alex. And you're looking at landfall here around Fort Myers from the National Hurricane Center, just based on the track, by Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. So we'll be following that one for you. It does look like at least a big rainmaker for South Florida. Seven day forecast shows that we don't have any impact from what can be Alex up here in North Alabama. Just isolated afternoon storms starting Sunday and some pretty nice weather tomorrow and Saturday. COVID-19 and the risk for diabetes. In just a few minutes, we take a look at how new research shows the two could be related. New at four, new research shows mild COVID infections may increase the risk for diabetes. Here's ABC's Justin Finch with more.
Diabetes is often a complication in severe COVID infections. Many health experts believe the inflammatory storm from COVID hurts the pancreas, which is the organ responsible for controlling sugar levels. But now a new study is suggesting that having severe COVID isn't the only risk factor for diabetes. The study now shows that diabetes risk can also increase from mild COVID too. Researchers in Germany looked at health records from more than 8 million people. For those who had just a mild COVID infection, 2% would have a new diagnosis of type 2 diabetes a year after their illness. That rate is 28% higher than what would be expected for a population of general adults. While this is still a rare complication, it is another reason to get vaccinated. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch. Scattered showers and storms all across the Way 31 storm tracker early warning radar network. I'm tracking who's going to see the heaviest rain next and what's in store for your Friday if we keep this. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Watching Alabama Broadcasters Station of the Year. Coverage you can count on. Way 31 News at 430 starts now. Storms making their way across North Alabama. You're taking a look at our Way 31 storm tracker early warning radar network. We're monitoring how long these conditions stick around. Plus a nation grieving after multiple mass shootings. President Biden set to address the American people tonight. And a mental health crisis center for kids in the Rocket City. We have an in-depth look at what will be the first of its kind in Alabama. Thanks so much for staying with us for Way 31 News at 430. I'm Marie Waxel. Let's get straight to Way 31. Chief Meteorologist Kate McKenna now. She's in our Storm Tracker Weather Center monitoring those current storms and rain just moving all across the, state, the area. You know, we've got a little bit of a break in some spots like Huntsville, like Decatur, but notice how there is not much of a gap here across North Alabama. Widespread thunderstorm activity on the Way 31 Storm Tracker Early Warning Radar Network. I want to take you on a closer view here again of Athens, Decatur and Huntsville because our widely traveled roads, we're talking I-65, 565. At least the water is getting a chance to run off right now, but look farther to the north. Look at all of the heavy rain around Fayetteville. And the good news in Lincoln County is that the heaviest rain has now pushed a little bit farther to the east, but back in the shoals just north of Florence. Look at all of the heavy rain and some frequent lightning there up 17. This is also generally tracking toward the east, but the cells within all of this rain are trying to kind of edge their way northward if they're moving at all. This has been, if you watch the loop here, for the past hour getting very heavy rain northwest of Florence. We'll be watching that area for maybe some standing water and then all of the rain here that's west of Athens that's going to continue to slowly push eastward as we go through this evening. Here's another view all around the area to show you that spots like Decatur are still seeing a little bit of a break, but a lot of cloud cover still in place, and all of us have benefited from that rain cooled air with temperatures in the lower 70s. Now I'm tracking for you what's in store the rest of this evening, how cool we're going to be in the wake of this cold front and how long we catch a break from this rain once it moves out. That's coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Kate. And remember, you can track this system from the palm of your hand by downloading our Way 31 Storm Tracker weather app. Just scan the QR code at the center of your screen with your cell phone. With our app, you'll have access to our state-of-the-art radar network. New information now. President Biden is set to address the nation, a nation gripped by gun violence. It comes as authorities reveal critical new details on what motivated a gunman to kill inside a Tulsa medical campus. This, just the latest mass shooting in our country. Isabel Rosales reports on those emerging details out of Tulsa, Buffalo, and Uvalde. Fear and panic, yet another mass shooting in America. This time at a hospital campus in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It was complete chaos as people ran out. A shooter opening fire Wednesday. Police say he killed two doctors, a receptionist and a patient. In this terrible scene, it's awful, it's sad. A major update from Tulsa's police chief, who says the shooter targeted this doctor who performed back surgery on him, blaming him for ongoing pain. We have also found a letter on the suspect which made it clear that he came in with the intent to kill Dr. Phillips. And according to three federal sources, the gunman bought the AR-15 cell firearm on the same day as the shooting. Meanwhile, in New York, the 18-year-old indicted in last month's racist supermarket shooting, appearing in court Thursday, pleading not guilty. 
All this as the tributes pour in. And new details emerge out of Uvalde, Texas. The mayor says a negotiator tried to call the killer. It's contrary to training, calling for officers to immediately confront active shooters. I think the truth will come out, and if we made mistakes, we'll own those mistakes. Inconsistencies shadowing the police's response as Americans look on and ask, how did this happen? You can't even go to a store. You can't even go to school. Now you can't even go to the doctor. I'm Isabel Rosales reporting. Breaking news just into our newsroom. Yet another new motion in the case against Casey White has been filed. He wants his capital murder trial that's set to begin June 13th for the death of Connie Ridgway pushed back. This comes after more than half a dozen other motions were filed in this case. Our team is currently reviewing those documents right now. and We'll have the very latest for you on Way 31 News at 5. Happening now, Huntsville police say someone stole an ATM from the back of a local credit union. It happened here when authorities responded to an alarm at Family Security Credit Union on Highway 72 early this morning. They found a large forklift and one of the ATMs missing. Investigators believe the forklift was taken from a nearby construction site. They say they believe the suspect is a white man. If you have any information, call police. Meanwhile, it's day three in the search for a Madison bank robbery suspect. You're taking a look at him now. Authorities say he went into the region's bank at the intersection of 72 and while trying a highway Tuesday and told people a small package he had was in fact a bomb. Well, authorities later said they determined that package was not a bomb or any other type of explosive. If you recognize this person or if you have any information about this crime, you're asked to call police. New at 430, the Department of Health and Human Services Oversight Agency is launching an audit to, into how the FDA responded leading up to the massive February recall of baby formula from Abbott Nutrition. The watchdog agency looking into whether FDA regulators followed proper procedure. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. Tonight, the baby formula crisis worsening, even as the Biden administration is expecting another large delivery of the vital infant food from overseas next week. The shipment is expected to put the equivalent of 3.7 million 8-ounce bottles of formula on empty store shelves. Nationwide, research firm Data Assembly says as of two weeks ago, 70% of baby formula is out of stock. I have no baby formula for my baby for the last two weeks. Growing questions about whether the Biden administration moved quickly enough to address the crisis. We as a whole of government approach has been working on this since the recall, which was in February. But after a meeting Wednesday with five baby formula manufacturers, the president saying he wasn't aware of the severity of the crisis until April, though that Abbott recall happened in mid-February. Their plant in Sturgis, Michigan, shut down over contamination concerns. Industry executives, however, telling President Biden they knew immediately the impact the shutdown of the largest baby formula plant would have on families with infant children. We knew from the very beginning this would be a very serious event. They did, but I didn't. The Office of the Inspector General and the Department of Health and Human Services also looking for answers amid calls for accountability. The OIG launching an audit into whether FDA regulators followed proper inspection and recall procedures after suspected deadly bacteria was detected at Abbott's Sturgis plant. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill learning that a whistleblower letter sent to the FDA detailing concerns at that plant sat in the FDA's mailroom for four months. Quite frankly, it's pretty disgusting what we heard. There were decisions that were suboptimal along the way. And the inspector general's office is hoping to finish its inquiry and put out its findings sometime next year. In the meantime, Abbott Sturgis plant is expected to reopen this weekend, but won't be at full operational capacity for up to eight weeks. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. The White House expects COVID-19 vaccinations for kids younger than five years old to begin as soon as June 21st. That's if all goes according to plan with Pfizer's application for emergency use authorization. By according to plan, we mean both the FDA and CDC both sign off on the company's vaccine in the next few weeks. Well, this comes as the number of new COVID-19 cases continues to increase across our state. According to the state health department, Alabama's positivity rate is now at 15 percent. We know more than 3,600 people tested positive in the last week. 
The health department reports six North Alabama counties are considered to be at a high risk for overall community transmission. It's likely we'll see an all new surge of COVID-19 cases this summer. Researchers say new variants are set to keep the virus circulating at high levels in the coming months and possibly into the winter months. Recent research suggests new variants can pass immunity barriers made by vaccines and previous infections. New at 4.30, a mental health crisis center for kids is coming to Huntsville. It'll be the first of its kind here in Alabama. Here's Way 31's Megan Reyna with why it's needed now more than ever. On South Memorial Parkway, day in and day out, workers are laying down the foundation, creating a center that will not only save the lives of adults, but kids as well. We started working on this back in 2018, 2019. Jeremy Blair is the CEO of Wellstone Behavioral Health. He says the construction you see next to its current facilities is for the Adult Mental Health Crisis Center. But the work doesn't stop there. There's now funding for a wing specifically for kids experiencing a mental health emergency. You know, our youth are in a mental health crisis right now and we need to continue to bring resources we can. A crisis that was magnified by the pandemic. That kind of sped up a lot of timelines and also highlighted the need for uh, you know, crisis beds for pediatrics especially. <laughs> Hemsey transports about 800 kids out of the county every year. Right now, the nearest crisis beds are in Decatur. And while we have emergency rooms here in Huntsville, Blair says it's not the same. Emergency departments are wonderful and they do a lot of great work in our community especially, but it's not always the right choice for someone who's in a psychiatric or mental health crisis. But like an emergency room, the center will be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're not open eight to five Monday through Friday. Um, because crises don't just happen in those hours. Where I'm standing right here will be the Children's Center. Construction is set to start in about a year. Now behind me is the Adult Center. That should be ready to go in August. Reporting in Huntsville, Megan Reyna, Way 31 News. The pediatric wing will have more than 20 beds once it's complete. The funding was awarded from state lawmakers and the governor. Celebrating Her Majesty, festivities underway, celebrating Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee. Coverage you can count on. New information this afternoon on the war overseas. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says 20% of his country is under Russian control, adding the Donbass, Donbass region is almost entirely destroyed. As fighting continues, Zelensky claims more than 30,000 Russian soldiers have died since the war began more than three months ago. As the war rages on, we're still feeling the impacts here in the U.S. Gas prices continue to rise across the country. According to Gas Buddy, the national average price for a gallon of gasoline is now $4.72. That's up more than 50 cents from last month's average. Taking a look closer to home, Gas Buddy has Alabama's average price at $4.37. New details now. Attorney Michael Avenatti was sentenced to four years in prison for stealing nearly $300,000 from his former client, adult film actress Stormy Daniels. Avenatti was convicted of wire fraud and aggravated identity theft back in February. It came after he stole $300,000 of the $800,000 book deal he helped Stormy Daniels sign. That book was about her being paid off to stay quiet about her alleged relationship with Donald Trump before the 2016 election. Happening now, a big celebration is underway. The United Kingdom is celebrating Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee. ABC's Inez de la Cotera takes us there. Four days of festivities celebrating Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee, kicking off this morning with what's known as Trooping the Color, a military parade that made its way down London's famous and historic mall. Three generations of the royal family in a single carriage coming out to mark the Queen's 70 years on the throne. Camilla, Kate and her three children, Prince William and Charles on horseback and a Royal Air Force flyover wowing the massive crowds. The Queen, who has been experiencing mobility issues, watching it all from Buckingham Palace and making her first appearance from that balcony, waving to her loyal supporters who gave her three raucous cheers in response. 
Prince Louis at one point stealing the show, sharing this heartwarming moment with his great-grandmother. Royal superfans camping out for days, hoping to catch a glimpse of their favorite royals. We want to see her and all the royal family and support her for her uh, Platinum Jubilee. It's a great event. And we basically come to make memories. It's only going to happen once. Harry and Meghan are also in London for the occasion. Prince Andrew was set to attend at least one event, but a royal source telling ABC News just moments ago the Duke has tested positive for COVID-19 and will no longer be attending tomorrow's service. The whole nation coming together to celebrate Britain's longest-serving monarch. It was beautiful. It's just being British makes you feel very proud when everybody comes together like this. Weather coverage you can count on with Alabama's Weather Anchor of the Year, Way 31's Chief Meteorologist, Kate McKenna. Well, I'm sure you've noticed the crawl at the top of your screen. We have a new flash flood warning in effect, which I will get to in just a second, but we'll give you kind of the overview here first on the Way 31 Storm Tracker Early Warning Radar Network showing the heaviest rain in a couple of spots. It has been falling pretty heavily up in Lincoln County, but especially in the shoals, and that's where our problem is just on the north side of Florence. So spots like Florence, St. Florine, Underwood, Petersville, continued under this flash flood warning. It's going to last until 745, maybe canceled earlier than that, but it's going to have to really let up here because it has been steadily raining for quite some time. Look at the radar estimated rainfall totals. Now the bulletin from the National Weather Service says two to three inches have already fallen. We've estimated here three to almost three and a half, four inches of rain. So that's the reason for this flash flood warning. Just a good evening to stay home, stay off the roads if you can. You'll see that this little cell hasn't been moving very much, but if you watch it here for the past, let's say half an hour or so, it does look like maybe the intensity is starting to wane just a little bit. Now farther toward the east, showers have been trying to move back into Limestone County, but generally all this is trying to track back up towards the northeast. And case in point, we've been talking about the heavy rain in Lincoln County. Now that has just been replaced by some steadier, more moderate rain rather than torrential rain. Showers closing back in on northeast Alabama. Fort Payne, get ready for some rain heading your way. But spots like Athens, Decatur, and Huntsville, we're getting a little bit of a breather. This is the view right now in Muscle Shoals. 73 degrees. Yes, it is raining. The wind, though, check that out. Out of the north at five miles per hour, that tells us that likely that front has already moved through. As we go through tonight, temperatures will be slow to drop initially, but I do expect us to at least make it into the 60s, many spots at least into the mid-60s. I know this is 68 degrees by 5 a.m., but will continue to cool in the wake of this cold front that is moving through as we speak. So the rest of this evening, heaviest rain does stay closer to the Tennessee-Alabama line. And as we get closer to midnight, we're just left with a couple of showers. And that's what we wake up to tomorrow morning. 20% chance for an isolated shower early Friday, but that's about it. The clouds will even continue to kind of break up through the second half of the day. So tomorrow looks like this, 83 degrees, some clearing, not a crystal clear blue sky. The wind out of the north at 5 to 10 miles per hour is going to make for a fantastic feeling day with that drier, less humid air moving in. So our seven day forecast shows us this. Yes, we have been seeing a lot of rain right now, but over the next seven days, there's really not a lot of that to be found. What instead ends up happening is that we have that typical kind of summertime pattern for us here in North Alabama afternoon pop up storms where not everybody sees rain, but those of us that do really does kind of put a damper on your outside plans. It's a 20% chance for those pop up storms starting Sunday, lasting all through next week. The temperatures on a more even keel as well. Once we get through tomorrow, 83 degrees. Remember your forecast high tomorrow. How about Saturday morning? That is coffee on the patio weather, 60 degrees. And by the afternoon on Saturday, your highs back up into the upper 80s. Looks good to me. Well, the fight to put their name in the history books. Game one of the NBA Finals just a few hours away. We'll give you a preview before it tips off right here on Way 31. The Rocket City Trash Pandas look to get back to their winning ways across the state line tonight. The boys from Madison dropped game two of their series against the Chattanooga Lookouts last night. But there's still more than well, there's still four more games to be played in this matchup. First pitch is set for 615 tonight. We'll have the final on Way 31 News at 10. One series for all the marbles. Of course, we're talking game one of the NBA Finals. Tips off tonight in San Francisco. Jason Tatum will try to lead the Boston Celtics to their first title in more than a decade. Can they do it? 
Yeah, well, not if Steph Curry has anything to say about it. He and the Warriors are looking for their fourth title in eight years. Game one starts at eight tonight right here on Way 31. Also happening tonight, the Scripps National Spelling Bee's back, but it looks a little different. As a lingering impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, some schools and sponsors dropped out. The bee has fewer than half of the spellers it had three years ago. You can watch the finals tonight at 7 o'clock on Way 31.2 Ion TV. Well, coming up next on Way 31 News at 5, we're on top of breaking news in the case against capital murder suspect Casey White. His team filing a motion to push back his trial just weeks before it's set to begin.